Hello, party people. Welcome to the show. My name's Relevant, and this is Do All The Things. Today on the show, we're going to be replacing the capacitors in a pair of Klipsch Heresy 2 stereo speakers. Now speakers, they have crossover units that separate the frequencies to the different drivers in them. And in that crossover is capacitors. As we all know, capacitors, they wear out over time, or supposedly. Some capacitors are more susceptible to others, but either way, it has been recommended to the owner of these speakers that he should replace the capacitors on it. Now, apparently this is an intimidating concept. It's a bit complicated. So he wasn't comfortable doing it. And that's the reason why he uh, commissioned it to me. Looking at what I saw online, it seemed pretty straightforward. So I guess we'll see. Now he purchased these used and they're a, a little bit like, I, I don't know, the, 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 the woofer looks different there than this one. We got a little, little puncture wound here that's been uh, glued up. This one looks like it's been replaced all together. Well, these are a work in progress for him. So he's got things he wants to do to them. In the meantime, the capacitors are where he wants to start. Now, apparently the capacitor kit he's purchased came from a guy named Bob Kreitz. Uh, the way he was talking about him, he apparently is a who's who in the Klipschiverse, so knows a thing or two about recapping these guys and put together a capacitor kit. There we go. We got these Sonic caps. Uh, they're some sort of recognizable name brand, I think. If you're into tube amp design as I am, you know, there's, there's a lot of discussion on whether or not an expensive cap is any better than a cheaper cap. But either way, you know, if you get some good ones, you can't go wrong. So we have a stereo set here. These two CAN capacitors here, uh, what are these? 68 UF 100 volts. These puppers here are what are the most subject to controversy because the CAN capacitors of this nature, they have moisture inside of them and they, they have a tendency to dry out over time. So these could be part of the problem. The capacitors that these guys replace, well, they're less susceptible to that kind of thing. And in fact, you'll have audio equipment that has stuff like this in it for you know a long time and nothing really goes wrong with them. These are 1.5 UFs. Apparently 1 UF was also recommended to replace them to tame the squawker, which is a horn-loaded mid. I'm not a fan of horn-loaded mids, but I guess we'll see. And these are all the same. So what, what do we have here? The inductor coils, this guy and this guy, those filter high frequencies out of a signal. Of course, you're gonna have one in series with the woofer to stop high frequencies from going there. 68 UF there, uh, oh geez, is that where the can goes? Usually a capacitor filters low frequencies. I wonder if that's some sort of low frequency roll off. Moving on to the mid, we got the squawker. There's the coil, gonna filter the high frequencies out of this signal, so they'll let the mids pass. And that's gonna filter the low frequencies to let the mids pass, so it's common to see a combination of both coil and capacitor on the mids. Tweeter, just a couple of these guys to get the lows out of there. And well, I don't know why they would have a coil across here. Kind of mirrors what's going on here. Maybe it has a similar effect. I don't know that much about uh, crossover design, just the basics enough to be dangerous. I could probably do some math and put together a very basic crossover. This design is a little bit beyond my pay grade. It's not that I don't really understand it. It's just I haven't put much time into it. So let's tear into these things and see what we got. This is the first one with the damaged woofer. Oh, hi. Kind of taking up the space here, bud. We'll just go ahead and jack up the camera and lighting here, but really, do you really care about my face? This isn't about my face. Going into the back of this thing should reveal what we're looking for. Oh, we got some beefies here, bud. Okay, and some color codes. Ah, we might have to go in here to disconnect these wires from the speakers. We have S, plus, and W. Can we see what's hooking up where? Oh boy. Maybe if I set up my little snake cam. Oh, these are the capacitors in question. That's definitely an old guard there. 1.5J250. They say they have trouble mounting these, but I, I, don't, I don't see why they would. Okay, let's fish ourselves the snake cam in there and see what we got. All right, we gotta shed some light on the situation, that's for sure. I'd rather not have to take the speakers out if I don't have to, so I'm hoping um, if I can just get a nice look in there, I can uh, see what's what. Okay, that that's, that's yellow. And what side are we on here? This side. All right, just uh, very lightly in pencil, yellow is on this side. It's a bit of a contortion. All right, now let's go look for the tweeter. 
Mm-hmm, tweeter, where are you? There you are, tweeter's green. What's going on here? Oh, there it is. Okay, ah, let's unplug those. All right, so they're keeping it rather uh, easy here. This is the top of the cab, and looking from the rear of the cab, anything on the right side is the positive connections or the colored connections. So I'll be able to figure this out. Same with the woofer. You might be seeing an inverted image, but la di da. Let's disconnect this now. Pull uh, the Cthulhu out of here and our crossover is free. And the foam he has in there is making a mess. It is just rotting and falling out all over the place. Ugh, foam everywhere. Ugh, more foam. All right, so what do we have here other than shards of foam everywhere? That looks like the mid right there. These solder joints look kind of crummy. We got to disconnect this to get this thing off of there, which is another thing some people uh, shy away from, but they're probably wrapped on there right nice. Yeah, they are. So we have to, without melting plastic, give it the old peel. Did you see how I did that? Second one's a bit tricky. First one I could leverage across the um, transformer to get the peel off, but then this one, oh, she's a bit more hidden in there, bud. Ugh. Yeah, okay, if you're not experienced with soldering, this is definitely, definitely tricky, but they're disconnected now. Just have to free up this board. ta dee da dee da And there we are on the back of the board. So these capacitors here, they have no general polarization. So you just throw them on any old which way and they should be good. I'll apply heat to the correct pad while pulling with your finger. Oh, there's a little bit of a, uh, how do I explain it? A hook had to pull up and now that should pull right out. You're probably gonna burn yourself. I always do because that's the nature of this game. There you go. That's one free. Yeah, suck out these holes. For the record, I'm using a 35 watt iron with a uh, relatively blunt tip. Blunt tip helps transfer heat quickly. This isn't the most precision work. I always use the largest tip possible. Keep your tip clean. Those holes are pretty much clear now. Let's get the next one out. Now the old ones, we're not too worried about preserving them. So you just kinda go ham. All right, that's two. Oh, look, it's nicely marked on the board. You're gonna know exactly where these puppers go after. I feel like my hands are shaky. It's early, I've had coffee recently. There's a lot of solder, so my um, solder sucker needs to be cleaned frequently. I've never met a solder sucker that didn't suck, so. I know there's desoldering irons, but that's a shotgun to kill a fly for small projects, in my opinion. I just want a quick suck, you know? All right, now this uh, larger cap here, the 68. Now, getting the new caps on, this was where it was said to be difficult because they're so large, but um, I don't see it, not with these guys. It sucks that it's gonna be logo face in, but how much do we care? Just hammer that on there. Look at that, that one fits. That one fits. Two for two. Oh, well this one block the uh... Now these capacitors, you have to be careful. You just, just get a whiff of heat on them, they're gonna melt. So maybe the challenge is in getting these guys reconnected. So we should, um, while we're here, clean up these connections to make sure they're ready. You know, if you got a bit of technique there, you can kind of just glob the solder off of it. You know, if you're not afraid to get a little bit of heat on you, you can just, you know, heat up really good and wipe it off. That should be good enough to rehook. Got all sorts of little refuse in here now. Sweep that out. He's kind of out of the way. Get the next capacitor in here. And again, I fail to see a problem. It's the 68 that's probably the problem. Like, it's physically smaller than the original. It's just, you know, putting it like this. Oh. Certain trickery? Yeah, well. Now be careful when you're working on this. These wires here are solid copper and they're stuck there and you're gonna be twisting and back and forth and you know, you could damage these. So be mindful of that. And we pull them taut, bend these guys out, pull them taut, bend these guys out. Fresh solder, we're using lead solder, the good stuff. Ross compliant solder is not designed to last. It's good for disposable things. Brrrp. 
Nice bunch of solder. Got that one. And that one. Remember, when you're soldering, you're not applying butter to a cold piece of toast with a hot knife. You're applying butter to a hot piece of toast. This means is you're heating up, you know, you put the iron on the contact and on the lead, get them hot, and then the solder will melt onto them. Okay, so we have to figure out which side is which. Are these not polar? There's no plus or negative on here. I guess they can't be. They have to be like, they have to be non-polarized AC uh, capacitors to do the job. Oh, look at the manufacturer. Uh, looks like it says Ars. R R R O Q. Oh, well, it's hard to get a detail on that. The schematic, oh, this guy drew this schematic wrong. Okay, you see this symbol with a flat and a curve? That's for polar capacitor, the flat sides plus the curve size minus. These sonic caps are not polarized capacitors. He's using the wrong symbol here, and for a technician like me, it's a little confusing, but again, I can see past it. The correct symbol is two flats like this, if it's a non-polarized capacitor. Okay, well, we'll assume bottom's negative, which means we'll take the um, top here, put it through the positive, give a little bit of space. So, how do you mount an axial capacitor on a radial mount? Easy, we just tack on another piece of uh, lead, just like that, to the weird mount, bring it around like that, effectively converting it into a radial mount. And then I just put like heat shrink or a little piece of tape on there. Sometimes to isolate this lead from the can, I'll, I'll wrap it with electrical tape and then tape it up some more creativity. However, however, if we look at this PCB, right here are the mounts for the capacitor, correct? Right here is another hole. And based on my research here, I've confirmed that this is copper and it connects directly to this so there's another hole right there it's a bit bigger but that's not a deal breaker i'm gonna have to clear the glue out of it so let's just take this pupper and slammer on there then right one hole two hole like this that's not a mount hole or anything that i can tell solder that guy up and then this guy look at that bam seriously uh hearsay recapper dudes uh did you miss this or is this something that's not on the hearsay one, which is uh, hearsay, heresy? Is this something that's not on the heresy one that's more commonly discussed? All right, so we just flip this around. Now, get it back into place. Look at that, everything fits stock. And here's buddies telling me there's kits to get around this fitting problem, but right there, bud. Ripping on the heat iron. Now we kind of need to get these puppers back into place. Should be simple enough. Just have to take and wrap them back around. A nice small needle nose. It should be easy peasy. Now you gotta watch out because those terminals, they're gonna take a lot of heat. If you take too much heat, you can melt the plastic, but at the same time, you need a good amount of heat on there to get the fusion you're going for. So, uh, let's see, I don't know what to tell you right just yet. Let's apply some heat to this and see what happens. Ah, that'll be just fine. Now this one's tricky. It's really close to that capacitor. There's a technique of twisting and squeezing with the, these buddies themselves. And these should be back together now, electronically. All right, so one of the finishing touches is to apply a little bit of glue, much in the same way it was done before. This can cap, get it on there. And uh, well, it's it's kind of tight down there. Anywhere you can get it, really. We'll go up between these guys. Be careful, you could melt the plastic. So I'm trying not to touch these guys directly with the tip. And uh, over here too, probably more accessible from this angle. Kind of gluing the wrong ends here. It's gonna be difficult for the next guy to a little bit more get these guys out uh, in another 30 years from now, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm, I'm not worried about that, are you? Give those a moment to cool down. We're gonna have to clear off this workbench space. Or actually, you know, I'll just do it down there. Ah, once it's cooled down, we're gonna find everything is solidly mounted on there. Now we're not too worried anymore. I'm gonna double check my screw torque manually. And you know what? Because vibrations, I'm gonna apply a bit of glue to these screws too. On the edge, so that you can still break them. Hopefully that'll stop them from rotating out of the place. You can tell I'm used to working on road gear. 
So I'm, uh, I'm gonna be on the floor here, trying to get this pupper back into place. Once again, we remember, red is woofer, yellow is mid, green is tweeter. We can feel around and reconnect these guys with our hands, knowing that all the positive connections are on this side. We just have to not lose track of the wires. So starting with the green tweeter, I'm gonna hold on to the green wire, go in there, Find the connector on this side, and there it is. I guess if you're experienced with speakers, you kind of know what to feel for. You know what these connections are gonna feel like. The geometry's a bit off. Get in on the tweeter. It's a tight fit. I don't wanna force it. It's hurting my fingers. Okay, being gentle and careful. The mids connections are on this side, so you kind of need this guy to face upwards. Ah, oh, this connector's looking rough. Oh, it's hanging on by a thread. Oh, so is this one. Uh-oh. Are they all like that? Okay, change of plans. This crossover bro needs a little bit more work. I don't want to be having to go out and find this guy new connectors. But, uh, you know, we're seeing here on the mid, that is, oh yeah, look, it's just, it's hanging on by a thread. Same with that one. Okay then, got to repair the connector ends too. Ah, tinned wires. A little tricky to work with, but we can work with it. Just kind of wrapping the wire around there. Not sure if you can see how I did that, but I just kind of wrapped the wire around there and I'm just gonna solder it on. Hopefully it stays in put so I can do that. She ain't pretty, but she just looks that way. Now for the other ones, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. Save me having a butcher on them. Just wanna cut back some of this insulation with my Kniff. Helps if you have a sharper one. Now that I have some exposed wire here, I'm just going to reinforce this joint. Which actually could take quite a bit of heat. Yeah. Now that'll probably last another 30 years. Assuming somebody isn't in and out, taking speakers in and out of the thing constantly. This one looks good. That one could use a touch up. We'll reinforce all these joints. I'm gonna try it again without having to peel back even though the problem is you reinforce the joint, but then you just end up, you know, making it weaker somewhere else, so. It's a very coarse wire. It's not your typical stranded speaker wire. It's like, you know, a few pieces of solid copper in there. Not designed to be taken in and out constantly. All right. The red one on the woofer is a bit weak too. I'll put a tack on black while we're here. All right, now let's go put it in there. All right, once again, green, tweeters face down, positives on this side. Reach in there, find it, slip it onto place. Grab the black, slip that onto place. Yellow, connectors for the, tweet, uh, the mid are upwards. So, get our geometry ready. And the woofer's easy, because it's like right there. Take a quick peek. Yeah, it looks good. Other than all the friggin' foam in there. So we have a gasket de fromage. Kinda have to slip this board in underneath there. Need a little bit of flex on that transformer coil. And get that gasket sitting nice. Pow. I just screw it up. Be careful with uh, electronic screwdrivers and wood of this nature. You can strip those holes out real easy. I uh, recommend uh, just getting the screws in there and then final torquing them by hand. Like show. Now before I work on the second one, I want to do a little bit of a listening test to see if I can hear the difference. I don't have any royalty free Laroc music that I'm familiar with, so I'm not gonna bother filming it. So uh, I'll be right back. So indeed, after some listening tests to my ears, I find the replaced capacitors do sound a bit cleaner. A little bit, a little bit cleaner. I don't know that the frequency response has changed, the, the general range in which the crossover points sit, but yeah, yeah, may, maybe a little bit cleaner. Uh, is this mod worth it? Mm. I don't know that the difference was profound per se. Uh, maybe Buddy will know better. I can tell you that these speakers, uh, they need further work. The one with the bad driver, well, eh, it's missing a bit of low end. It's, it's not responding the way it should. The one with the replaced driver sounds way better. 
So while you weren't paying attention, I went ahead and did the Swapsky Swapskies on the other one because, well, I didn't really see necessarily uh, filming the same thing twice and, you know, I blazed right through it pretty quickly. After much warning of the complicated nature of this changeover, I don't know, it was easy for me, but then, you know, I got over 20 years experience doing this kind of thing. I can see how someone who's not used to soldering could straight up damage their crossover. You know, it takes some technique and some careful touch, especially getting the, the solid copper wires off the binding posts. I slipped with my iron at least once doing the second one and burned my finger. That's something I'm used to, didn't even phase me. But, you know, if you've got some experience soldering and you feel comfortable enough, you know, I think you're going to be able to pull it off. Just have to mind that there is that second hole on the contact board for you to mount those capacitors, those axial capacitors correctly without any trickery. Whether you guys out there at Clips World knew this already, I don't know. But hey, maybe I uh, turned you on to something new. In the meantime, uh, well, again, I, I have no real music to show you, you wouldn't hear the difference anyways, so showing them running, uh, it seems pointless. But, you know, we're done here. Tomorrow, I'll deliver them back to the client, and that will be another successful thing that I've done. Another successful thing that I've done. It almost sounds a bit pretentious.